The Dallas Cowboys are 60 years old. Jerry Jones is a lot older than 60, but his impressions on this franchise seem to be never ending. And right now, I am Fort Worth Star Telegram sports columnist, joined by Clarence E. Hill Jr. to discuss the Cowboys at 60 and what this franchise was before the arrival of Jerry Jones, what they are, and where they are going. Now, as we all know, the Cowboys stink this year. And even though we're in December and the Cowboys barely have any wins, technically they still have a shot at making the playoffs, as embarrassing that is. No one is making those plans. Jerry Jones might be because he's that much of an optimist. Clarence, you've been around the Cowboys for, for a long, long time. And the Cowboys pre-Jerry and post-Jerry seem to be dramatically different franchises, even though in the 90s they had that run under Jimmy Johnson where they won three Super Bowls in four years. It's an amazing accomplishment. And for a while there, it looked like the Cowboys under Jimmy and Jerry were going to sustain the success and that level of expectations established by Tom Landry and Tex Schramm and to a lesser extent, Gil Brandt as well. When you look at the history of this franchise, where did they go wrong? Was it just as simple as letting Jerry, as letting Jimmy Johnson walk out the door? <laughs> letting Jimmy walk out the door was probably, at least as far as, you know, um, Jerry's tenure. You know, it, it, it was the thing that, that you had an opportunity to really be something special, be something great. And and they were great. They won three Super Bowls in four years, and they were the team of the '90s. But it could have been so much greater. And and uh, and for whatever reason, Jerry and Jimmy not being able to get along, get on the same page. And there are people that tell you that Jimmy uh, was never going to be long for Texas anyway, or for the Cowboys anyway, because he never stayed anywhere that long. You know. And so uh, that was, you know, again, they have not been able to get their footing since then. I mean, you know, you, you look at. All the other teams and in the years since then and since the 90s, you know, they've been, you know, treading water. They've been underwater. They've never gotten over the top. You know, Clarence, we talked about because it's one little detail in that breakup that I don't think gets enough attention. And that is the idea that and I think Jimmy Johnson has even said it. He was probably going to leave anyways, yeah. regardless if there was any disagreement. Jimmy just was one of those coaches who had the itch. We've seen other guys do it. Bill Parcells was here. And even before Bill walked in the door, he said, I'm not going to be here for long. Uh, Larry Brown, the basketball coach, other coaches have said they were, I'm going to be here, but this is just who I am. Why do you think that is that when we talk about this breakup, we don't want to acknowledge, look, he was probably going to leave anyways. Yeah. But, but the thing is he wasn't going to leave then, you know, and they had a chance to, to do something special. Yeah, they won three in four years, but they could have they could have done a three pre. Okay. They could have been, they could have won three straight years and maybe four straight years before it all fell off, before Jimmy left and and, and decided to do something else. And and so uh because of that, because they did not, you know, get I you know, it's hard to say a team that won three Super Bowls in four years, left some on the table, left some meat on the bowl, did not did not quote unquote live up to their full expectations. But, but you can say that. Yeah. The team, you know, had a chance to, you know, whatever we say about the about the uh Patriots now, what the Cowboys did pre-free agency, you know, and what they did pre-free agency, uh they had a chance to be to be the greatest team, great greatest group of champions in NFL history, better than the uh, Green Bay Packers, certainly better than the Steelers of the 70s, and better than the Patriots now, if somehow they could have kept it together and won three straight or four straight Super Bowl titles. You know, Clarence, when we talk about the Cowboys, there still remains this mythical status about Tom Landry. And for all the obvious reasons, you know, he wore a suit and tie, he wore, he had the fedora, he did things that separated himself, he did it with the Cowboys, but you know, there's there's part of his legacy that, that certainly gets glossed over, and that is the fact that for a long time, the Cowboys were the team that were always next year's champion. They were always the team that could never quite win at all 
until you know, obviously they had the humiliating defeat against the Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl four, I think it was, or five, I can't remember. But they always were that close. When we look at Tom Landry's legacy, I'm talking about pre-Jerry Jones, and we look at Tom Landry's legacy as a head coach, do you think that sometimes we want to make him out more, I mean, make him more than what he was in terms of this was a great coach, but he also had some – no, you, no. I mean, Tom Landry was a legend and deservedly so. I mean, you're talking about a, a young man from Michigan, Texas, went to the University of Texas, Texas, uh, who went on to you know, New York Giants, who came to Dallas to start the franchise. They they started this thing from scratch. There was there was no, you know, it, it wasn't nothing already here. I mean, they started this from scratch, and so they built this. And then he went on to win 20, had, have 20 straight winning seasons. You know, five NFC titles. But you you mentioned something with the, the hang on. you mentioned something though with the Jimmy Cowboys, and they were the three and five or the three and four were were Jimmy. Even though Barry won, Barry Switzer won it. That was Jimmy's team. But you talked about leaving meat on meat on that bone. Where anybody who looks at that team that lost the NFC Championship game in '94, whatever it was '94 '95, on that mud pit in San Francisco, Troy Aikman still said it was the best game he ever played, and even though they lost. The Cowboys probably should have won that game. Now, they had a horrible first quarter, but they just kept turning it over. But you mentioned that was a team that left something on the table. And when we look at the, the Landry Cowboys, I think that was a team, as great as they were, as amazing and as pioneering, as revolutionary as they were, not just in football, in sports. I think anybody who looks at that team would would or should assert they probably could have done some more too. Well, you know, you know I, I, I don't disagree. say that. I disagree because the Steelers won four Super Bowls. Steelers were great. Chuck yeah. Noll, Steelers. Look at the Hall of Famers on that team. It wasn't like they were losing to you know the Sisters of the Poor. It wasn't like they were you know it, it was some upstart that came in and, and snatched the title away from them. It was the Steelers. It, it was the Steelers who you look at the Hall of Famers on that team and what they did from Lynn Swan and Starworth and 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 Bradshaw and, and and Mean Joe Green and they they were legends of the game, you know. And, and so they didn't get over the hump. I, I, listen, I don't know about you, but I watched those teams from you know all my life, and 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 you know, and and I I, I probably shed a tear when when they lost to both. To Steelers in the Super Bowl a couple of times, you know, and and certainly when Jackie Smith dropped that pass, uh, you know, and, and them having to lose that game, you know, they were right there with those Steelers, you know. But well, with, they, you know, they, the you cannot say they underachieved because no, 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 team was that special. Were they better? They, either of the years, sometimes a great team plays another great team and they just lose. And you mentioned the Jackie Smith game. Go back and look at that roster, the rosters of those teams, the organizations, and look at all the Hall of Famers, right? It's just an incredible list of Hall of Famers from both teams. But were either time the Cowboys the better team and they just lost, or were the Steelers the better team and they outplayed the Cowboys both times? Oh, I, I think the Steelers were the better team. I mean, I think that you, history would say that the Steelers were the better team and they and and, and they got it done, you know. And and uh, you know, it, it it's. I, again, I, I don't see the Cowboys underachieving in those games, you know. And, you know, Clarence, when we sit here and talk about, though. I'm, I'm sorry. They, they, you know, just it, – it, it's tough because after losing the Steelers, they went on and beat the, the uh, Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl. And, you know, that may have been their best team, you know, the year they beat the Broncos when everything came together, when 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 when, when Randy White and, and Harvey Martin, and that doomsday was at its best. You, you look at that team – that may have been their best team. Maybe those teams that they took to play the Steelers weren't their best team in those years. Clarence, when we talked about doing this, we talked about like the Cowboys and how they've changed, even though they've had dominant front office types who had a vision for marketing. Tex Schramm was visionary when it came to marketing sports for the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones is much in the same way, different guys, but they very much have that, uh, they both had that vision. But when you look at these two franchises, forget the records. How are they different, Clarence, with Tex and Landry running it as opposed to Jerry and any number of head coaches? 
Well, I mean, I think that the continuity, I mean, that, that's the thing. I and mean, you, you brought up the Steelers. And one thing that, that hallmark of the Steelers is consistency and continuity and ownership, general manager and, and the head coach. And, 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 and that's the thing that, that you had with Tex and Tom. They were tied to the hip. You know, they were a team. And they were there for from the beginning until Jerry bought the team and, and, and he sent them all packing. But since Jerry has been the only thing that's been, you know, the same, you know, since Jerry's been here is that Jerry. Jerry's the GM, Jerry's the owner, and that's the only thing that's been the same. Outside of that, you you've had the head coaches and and, and the the constant revolving door with, with the head coaches after Jimmy left and and they it's continued to be a problem, you know, and and I think that you know they've gone from you look at you know since I've covered the team, you know they were four three, then were they three four, and then back to four three, and then back to three four. Who are they? Who would they want to be other than a marketing machine? They are still a marketing machine. They are still a team that that resonates internationally with their name and with their likenesses and with you know all of the paraphernalia, but winning on the field. That's been a problem. Certainly has been a problem since Jimmy left. And you look at, you know, again, since 1996, since their last Super Bowl title in 1995, excuse me, they, they've they won four playoff games. <laughs> and none of them have been in the divisional round. Okay, so Clarence, I, I agree with what you're saying. It is amazing to me that the Cowboys can still market themselves even though they haven't had the success now for 25 years. It's remarkable. And that's built on what they did in the set. And that's built on. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. The foundation of everything. And he's built on, he certainly added to it, but everything they're making money off started with Tom and Tex and those Cowboys, you know, from their inception. So when someone says to you, Clarence, because I've got my own ideas. When someone says to you, Tex Ram or Tom Landry, what is their legacy on football? What was their impact on football? I mean, again, with, with Tex, it, it, it's it's being the architect of the Cowboys and, and building them into America's team. I mean, everything he did was strategic. Putting the Cowboys in the NFCs, that was not an accident. You know, you know, creating the Cowboys cheerleaders, you know, doing those things. Those were all Tex, wearing the white uniforms at home. You know, uh, a lot of things he did – you know, uh, revolutionary. And, and, and certainly that helped build the Cowboys into America's team. And certainly Tom, again, you know, you, you look at Tom and, and, and the amount of wins and, and, and what he's done, the 20 straight winning season, two Super Bowls, starting the team from scratch, you know, was a, you know, a defense coordinator with the Giants and came to Dallas and, 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 and really, you know, built his legacy. And he's a Texan. Again, you're talking about a guy that, that grew up in Texas, went to college in Texas, he is large enough. When you when you think of the 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 state heroes, okay, Tom Landry is one of them. So now we go to 2020. Jerry's on the team now for you know you started to knock on the door 30 years. Yeah. What's his like? He's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, just like Tex, just like Tom. He's got a bust too. Because the one part of it you're talking about football, the one thing. Tex, I never thought, well, he no, he did. His legacy also is in the marketing of, of, of his brand, the cheerleaders, the NFC East, like you're talking about. That was a shrewd move if there ever was one. There's a lot of other ones too. But when you look at Jerry, what's Jerry's – he's in the Hall of Fame for a reason. What's Jerry's impact and legacy on the sport? Well, I, I think it's more about what he's done on a league-wide level, you know, and from – the local sponsorships. Now other teams are able to make money off their franchises. You know, before Jerry, you know, even, you know, a lot of teams used the owners treated their football team as a hobby. You know, yeah. you know, they didn't, you know, that wasn't their main source of income. And Jerry made it his, it was his full-time job. He made his main source of income. He started making money on his franchise and taught other owners how to make money. And, you know, you, you look now and his impact on stadiums and his impact on TV contracts and in and his influence on a league wide level, you know, that's his legacy. Not necessarily the three Super Bowl titles, you know, as we're gonna get at the Jimmy. You know, not, not necessarily that even though he'll say, I like those three Super Bowl titles. <laughs> I like those three Super Bowl titles. But his impact is, you know, the Pepsi. You know, you know, the league was with Coke. Jerry said with well, the Cowboys with Pepsi. 
and you know, Lig may have been Buick. We're going to go with Ford. We're going to go with Nike. We're going to create our own oh, Fox. Yeah, on oh, you bring in Fox in the TV contract. But you look at now, and, and this is about stadium. I mean, Jerry, you know, is is right now. I I think he's having a bigger impact over the last ten years than he may have had over the, the first twenty, just because. The 49er Stadium, the Atlanta Stadium, uh, the uh, Los Angeles Stadium, the stadium in Los Angeles, the stadium was in Vegas. Those, Jerry has his hand in all of those. No doubt about it. Yeah, so he's the reason why football is back in L.A., in that stadium in L.A. It's Jerry. Jerry Jones. No doubt. Clarence, this was fun. Dallas Cowboys at 60. The Dallas Cowboys before Jerry Jones won a lot of Super Bowls, made a lot of money. Dallas Cowboys after Jerry Jones or with Jerry Jones. They used to win Super Bowls, but now they make a lot of money too. And make money for others. Yeah. Now how's it how's it working out for you? Not me. I'm just I'm other teams in the league. Other teams. Oh, there, we there we go. Not me. Right. Thanks, Clarence. Thank you.